So it's been almost a year since my last home office setup tour, and I feel like I'm overdue. Usually I post a couple of them a year, but I've been gone for almost like six months of this year. I've made some changes to my office, basically out of boredom and just wanting to kind of refresh things. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I've changed and what I've added to the setup. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. So if you watched my last home office tour setup, you saw that my desk used to be against the window. Now this setup was great, but as you know, if you follow this channel, I get bored very easily and I switch things up. And one day I just decided to move my desk over to the other wall where my TV is. The reason for this is because I mounted this TV at the perfect height where I could really use it as a monitor. So I moved the desk over there, tried it out, and ended up really liking it. So starting with the desk itself, this is the FlexiSpot E7 in the dark bamboo color. This is a 71 inch by 35 inch deep desk, and they say it's rated to hold up to 355 pounds. It's really your standard sit-stand desk, nothing too fancy as far as the functionality of it. They give you your presets, they give you your up and down buttons on the left. I do like that it has a little USB input on the side so you can plug your phone in. But the main thing I love about this is just how deep the desk is. As much as I loved my IKEA desktop, it was only 24 inches deep. So having a full setup on there, it just felt cramped. So when I got this, I was able to kind of push everything out and I can have everything up on the desk while still having a ton of space right in front of me. For the monitor configuration, right now I am running the LG OLED C1 TV as kind of the main monitor, whether I'm using it for my monitor or just using it to watch TV or whatever it is while I'm working. And to the right of that is the LG Dual Up monitor. Now an LG monitor, is it good as a computer monitor? There's a ton of videos out there of people who have switched to this. Um, some people swear by it. Some people aren't a big fan of it. I could kind of go both ways on it in the few months that I've had it set up like this. I do enjoy certain things about it as a computer monitor, and there's some things that I don't like about it. Honestly, the biggest reason that I use this is for coloring in DaVinci Resolve. I love that I can have that beautiful OLED image with the million to one contrast ratio. Now, I don't have this properly set up as like industry standard colorists would have their OLED monitors set up. I do have the factory remote, but all that stuff is just, it kind of goes over my head. But at the end of the day, anything I'm coloring myself is most likely just going to web. And if it is going to broadcast, I'm hiring a colorist anyways, and it's honestly such a beautiful display for the price. So I've really enjoyed having this as a computer monitor for that reason. Now this does come with some drawbacks, like the biggest thing for me is the slight latency with the mouse whenever I'm working on here. You can kind of see it when I move the mouse around on the TV screen versus the dual up monitor. That's been one big gripe for me. The other thing is it has auto dimming. I have not disabled this by using the factory remote, but it's fine, I just have to shake you know, a bright, box or something like the finder box. So I'll just move this over here, shake it, it wakes back up. Not really a big deal. Now I have this set up to handle all of my post-production needs in a sense, but honestly, I'm not really doing as much post-production as I have in the past. So more often than not, this is just being used to watch YouTube videos, um, podcasts, TV shows, movies. That's why I like having it here because I can set up my MacBook Pro where I still honestly do most of my work from anyways. And then a lot of times I'm kind of moving projects and moving data around, especially when I was coming home from the road over a weekend, I would back all of my footage up. And so I would use the dual up monitor for that, which is perfect. It's nice just to kind of have it to the side as a utility monitor. And um, I can do all of that type of work on there just fine. Now the size of it may kind of throw people off thinking that's a 48 inch TV that's way too big. Why are you sitting so close to a monitor? But I'm honestly not really sitting that close to it. This desk is like 35 inches deep. So there really is a lot of space between me and this monitor. Oftentimes when I am actually watching it, I kind of lean back in my desk chair, which takes me even further back. I think the, the distance for me kind of works perfect. Now let's move to the top of the desk and what is on it. Starting with the speakers, I have the Edifier S2000 Pros, which I've had for three years now. I've included them in all of my other setup videos. These things are awesome. They're loud. They sound great. In between the two, you will notice that I have this sound bar. This is a Vizio sound bar with 5.1 surround sound. This Vizio soundbar setup is probably one of my favorite soundbars for the price. But why do I have both? this setup and these speakers. Well, the soundbar setup is just set up to my TV and the Apple TV. So whenever I'm watching 
YouTube or I'm watching a movie or TV show, I'm usually watching it on the Apple TV, so it's running through these speakers. I wanna have it set up like that because if I'm watching movies or a TV show, I wanna have the surround sound and that whole kind of audio experience. But if I'm working on my computer, which obviously are two different inputs on the TV, I, I just am listening to music on the edifier speakers and it's kind of better suited for that. So it just made sense to leave the soundbar here whenever I kind of turn this into a desk setup. Now this is my favorite addition to the setup that I purchased earlier this year. This is the Black Magic Design Micro Panel. Much like everyone else in the filmmaking industry right now, coloring in DaVinci Resolve is the thing and this just kind of adds to that experience. If you're wondering if you need this to work in Resolve, you absolutely don't, but it does kind of make it a more intuitive experience. I wouldn't necessarily say it makes my coloring better by any means, but it does definitely enhance the experience and I'm able to really fine tune things. It is a pretty pricey piece of equipment, but if it's within your budget and you feel like it will add to your workflow, I definitely recommend it. It's built like a tank and it's really fun to use. To the right of this is this little camera gadget here. This is the Insta360 Link, and it's an awesome gimbal-based webcam. Insta360 sent this out to me earlier this year to make a review on. You could check it out here. You basically throw it on your computer or throw it on the stand, plug it in, and it tracks your movement. So it follows you and keeps you in the center of the frame. So it's one of the few products that I've been sent and I actually use, which is very rare because oftentimes when I do tech product reviews like this, um, I don't end up actually using it. There's not really a realistic use case for it. Moving down to the peripherals and the front of the desk, we have the Orbit Key desk mat that I've had for years. I'm still using this thing like three years later. I've included it in all of my other desk setup videos as well. The keyboard I'm using is the Apple Magic Keyboard. This is whatever the latest keyboard is they have with the numeric pad on the right and the Touch ID. There's really nothing special about this other than it's an Apple product, so it's built really well. My mouse is the Logitech MX Master 3. I've been using this thing for like three years straight. And finally, to the left of this desk, I have this Shure SM7B microphone. I got this thing last year. I absolutely love it. I think it sounds awesome. I use this for basically everything YouTube related now. I always keep it on the desk over here because when I'm editing my YouTube videos, there's always a time where I either forget a bit of information or I say something incorrect and I have to fix it. If you're looking to step up your mic game, I highly recommend it, but it is a little pricier than some of the others that are out there. For my chair, I'm using the Autonomous Ergo Chair Pro. Overall, it's an awesome chair. However, I do wish that the seat itself was a little bit thicker. Moving to the computer that's powering all of this, we're running a Mac Studio. It has an M1 Max chip with 32 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte hard drive. I know that's small, that's the smallest one it comes with, but I honestly don't store anything on this. I store everything on my RAID, which is the OWC Thunder Bay 8. This is a 48 terabyte eight drive array. This has eight six terabyte hard drives on it. One of them is used for backup in case any of the other drives fail. It'll essentially just recreate itself. So I have 42 terabytes of usable storage on this thing. This is where I hold all of my projects for the year. I basically run through around that much in data per year. After that, I move them onto an archive drive and then have a reset for the new year. All of this is plugged into this APC battery backup. All of my important pieces of tech are plugged separately into this. So my computer is plugged in separately to this. My hard drive is plugged in separately to this. So in case there is a power outage, this thing will stay powered. It doesn't shut everything off. And I have a program set up on my computer to where it will trigger that whenever there is a power outage and safely shut everything down. So you're not just having a sudden power loss. That's how hard drives corrupt. That's how you fry things. They're really not that expensive and it'll save you a lot of headache in the event that you have a power outage or some sort of power shortage. Moving under the desk, we have the cable management. Now, my cable management is not tip top with this setup. There's cables exposed. I'm okay with that. How the setup is, there are going to be cables running around here and there, and that's fine with me. I basically just have two Vivo cable raceways that are holding the bulk of the cables. I have some plastic raceways to kind of tuck things behind that, and some ties, some cable sleeves, stuff like that. Kind of the usual stuff just to get it up and away. I did do a cable management video for this new desk, so be sure to check out that video. I posted it a couple months ago. 
Now that sums up the technical side of this desk setup. Now let's move back to what's behind the wall here. These are acoustic panels. They're technically used for sound treating, but I really just got them because I think they look cool. The entire wall here is black and I wanted to add a little bit of texture to it. So these little tiles really just create a cool look behind here and I think it looks awesome with the desk sitting here now. To the left we have a lamp that is set up to a Philips Hue system. I'll get more into the Philips Hue and the lighting towards the end of this video. So that's it for the desk setup itself. Now let me move to some of the other things that I have in here but first I'm going to switch to the lav mic and the vlog camera and just kind of walk you around the space. All right we are back now on a different camera on the gimbal so that way I can kind of walk you through this whole space. I'm also on a lav mic now so it might sound a little bit different but it's going to show you all the different areas of this office here. Starting with down here, the mini fridge. This is where I keep energy drinks mainly stocked here. And I've been waiting all day to have this. So I'm going to grab one real quick. Don't be fooled. This is never stocked like this. I pretty much just did that for the video. Now I already know people are going to get mad that I have this on top of the refrigerator. I promise you it's fine. No reason to get mad at it. I already know people in the comments are going to flip. But let's talk about the space over here. So pretty much whenever I moved the desk over from the window, it just opened up this whole area, which I just kind of keep free for storing stuff or kind of keeping the things that I use the most often over here. So we have this light over here. This is the Nanlite Forza 200 with a little soft box. I use this for a lot of my videos um, and just like quick little content things. It's super small. So it's nice to keep in here because it doesn't take up too much space. Over here is where I've been keeping all of my luggage and camera cases, backpack, all the stuff that I travel with most frequently. Um, when I was on the road from April through August, this stuff just lived here for like the two or three days that I was home at a time. Over here we have the Tumi luggage. This is the Tumi International Carry-On. Best luggage I've ever owned. It's worth every bit of money that I paid for it. The wheels on it are incredible. It basically just floats next to you when you're at the airport. This is the Nanic 935 carry-on camera case. Don't really bring that out too often. Um, I pretty much keep everything in my camera backpack and then the rest of it in my carry-on luggage. And this backpack is the Axis V2 from Tenba. My favorite camera bag I've ever owned. I'm gonna do a full review video on this next just because I love it so much. I got it uh, at the end of last year and it has not let me down. Over here we have the Sockler Active 8 with the Flowtech legs. This is a new tripod I got towards the end of last year. I'm sure most of the people watching this video do not even know like what this is or nor do they care about it. Up here, Canon C70. This is what I shot basically the entire first half of this video on. So yeah, this is just the, an area where I keep all of my stuff. I try not to let it get too cluttered, but it happens. Over here I have what used to be my TV entertainment center that was on the wall under my TV. I kind of just keep it as storage or to keep things on top of it. And just kind of looks nice under the window here. So I just kept it there. Let's move up here to some decorations. Up here I have this magazine holder with a couple vintage editions of American Cinematographer. This is the month and year I was born. This is just a super old one that I found. This one, 2011, the year I started filmmaking. This one, January 2015, was the month and year that I moved to LA, which was kind of what started my career. Down here, I have all of my favorite tours and festivals that I've been on. If you follow this channel for a while, you know I work heavily in the music industry as a videographer, mainly in the EDM space. Most recently, moved more into country, working with Luke Combs, which I'll show you real quick a new addition to the space. The reason I was gone for most of this year was because I was on a stadium tour with Luke Combs. We did 16 stadiums and the tour promoter made these posters for everybody at the end of the tour. I just thought it was kind of a cool piece to put up here on the wall. Moving back over here, I just have these foam panels. Again, they're meant for sound isolating, sound treating. They're just kind of for looks. I just think they look kind of nice on the wall. I like adding texture to the wall so it's not just plain colors. Got my closet here. You don't want to see that, trust me. Right here I have my couch, which has been here for a while. You saw it in the last video. I got this from CB2, um, used on Facebook Marketplace, so I actually got it for a pretty good price. And then I've got the surround sound speakers on each side here. Up here is a canvas from Iconic, 
which I just thought was kind of a cool quote. I don't remember the paint color here, but I will put a link in the description for it because I'm sure people will ask. Up here is a light bar from Govi that I don't use anymore. I think it looks like crap and I'm probably gonna take that down soon. Over here is a geometric three-tier wall shelf. I can't find the actual one, but uh, there have been a lot of people in the comments who have been very helpful with tracking this thing down. So I gotta go back through, I'll find some of the links that they recommended and I'll be sure to put that there. But last thing to cover in here is the lighting, which is all Philips Hue. I've got Philips Hue light strips on the back of the TV, which are kind of falling off. You can tell there's like a weird gradient there. Need to fix that, probably should have done that before the video. I've got a Philips Hue bulb in this lamp, and then I have a light strip behind the desk here, which just kind of illuminates all of this down here. I think it looks pretty nice. And all these lights I can control from this little Hue remote that pops on and off of the wall. Or I can use my phone and um, choose whatever colors and stuff I want, but usually I just turn everything on and off from here. This whole space gets really great natural light throughout the day because of these windows. So usually these lights are off, but for the sake of the video, I just want to show you this. Let's switch over to a quick little night montage and I'll show you what it looks like in the dark. So that's it for my home office setup for 2023. You've probably seen all of this stuff before if you've watched my videos in the past, but I just wanted to kind of showcase the update and the changes that I've made because I feel like this all-in-one setup over here just kind of fits what I'm doing right now and my needs when I am working from home. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you got a little bit of value out of it for your own setups. I'll have a link in the description with everything that I listed here today, so be sure to check that out if you're interested in getting anything for yourself. I will see you all in the next video. Later.